This is Mike Pollock, and you're watching Tales Channel. Hey guys, I'm Matt, the owner of Tales' channel, and here I have a very, very, very special guest. He's the voice of Eggman, as long as a lot of other things. He's Mike Pollock. What's up? Thank you so much, and good evening. How are you? I'm thrilled to be here as always. Thanks for asking. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. <laughs> I'm apparently quite grateful. Alright, so here we are in Launch Bay Zone. I know you don't play video games that much, so... Not since the mid-80s, which means any video game I may have ever played, no one remembers. <laughs> but that's alright. Alright, so how about you tell us, like, what got you into voice acting? Sure. Uh, I always, as a kid, I loved radio. I would listen to the radio and disc jockeys, and there was even some uh, old-time radio drama still being made. And I uh, heard that and said, well, isn't that interesting? That's a fun thing to do with just your voice. And then every cartoon that I watched as a child, I was consciously watching the cartoons and then subconsciously paying attention to the acting and, and what the voice talent was doing and forming impressions of in my head of, hey, I could do that. And uh, eventually I, I paired that into a career in radio. And when I was in radio for a while, I realized what I really enjoyed about radio was doing the wacky voices and commercials and stuff. So radio started to get all crappy and then I started to pursue uh, voiceover acting full time which includes cartoons and commercials and narrations and medical narrations and audiobooks and promos occasionally. So I got to do the, the best of the, uh, of the whole career and do just what I wanted to do. And that's what I'm doing. That's awesome. Because I know you have voiced a ton of characters in many different games. Like you voiced in Pokemon as the narrator. You voiced in a lot of stuff. You're like a icon in voice acting, and it is great to have you on the show. Thank you. As I like to say, I'm more than just Eggman. <laughs> well, perhaps I've never said that, but I should say that. Well, even though Eggman's a good character, you gotta give props to all the other characters you've done as well. I certainly will. Do you enjoy voicing Eggman? Um, I like working just in general, so, I mean, it's cool to do Eggman. Um, it's very cathartic, so if I have any uh, anger built up inside of me, that pretty much gets worked out with the yelling and screaming. <laughs> so you just take all your anger out at Sonic? Yeah, basically. Alright, that's cool. So, what game did you really like, like voicing Eggman for the most? Out of all the games you voiced for the Sonic series? It's got to be a toss-up between colors and generations. Both uh, because of the clever writing in both and because of the, the fun that I got to have. The, uh, the now infamous PA announcements and colors were as much fun to record as they were to listen to. And the uh, dueling Eggman's scene in Generations was also lots of fun. Yes, the ending scene in Generations was pretty yes. awesome. Thank you. I'd have to agree. So, yeah. I'll ex... Oh, how do I ask this question? Like, besides Eggman, which character have you also really enjoyed, like, doing? Uh, well, in the uh, Sonic universe, uh, what most people don't realize is I was the voice of Ella the Maid in Sonic X. And the fact that I was cast as Ella the Maid made me laugh hysterically. <laughs> um, but in general, the voices that make me laugh, so meat and ultimate muscle, which is your basic uh, big burly truck driver voice, just makes me laugh. I love doing that. And I have been fortunate enough to have other characters based on that same voice. So Bonaparte in uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX was a very similar character to me with a bit of a more effeminate quality. And um, Big O Riki in Go Go Riki was a slightly more educated sounding me. So that voice just, I could not get through a session without dying of laughter at least once. <laughs> well, you have done many voices and yeah, it's so awesome. Thank you. Great fun. So, like, what have you enjoyed, like, which character have you enjoyed, like, doing the most out of any other character you've ever done? Um, it's hard to pick a favorite, but the ones with the combination of funny voices and clever writing would probably be the winner. So, as much as I enjoyed the clever writing in Viva Piñata, 
the clever writing plus Big Oriki's voice in Gogo Riki would probably be my all-time favorite. And also the episodes were short enough that if I wanted to tell someone, hey, go watch something that I did really quick, that would be a perfect thing because the episodes are about seven or eight minutes long. I got you. So you want to, like, tell us anything about, I don't know, just how it is voicing these characters or anything? Um, again, it's tremendous fun. It, it, in many ways, it beats working because um, I get to go into a room, read a script, which I'm fairly proficient at, uh, make funny voices, make myself laugh, make the other people in the room laugh, and uh, get a bit of scratch on the way out. So, so I'm, there's nothing uh, there's nothing not to like. I'm guessing it's really fun to be a professional voice actor, as he said. It is. It is. It's even when most of the days of the week are searching for new and exciting jobs, which can be nerve-wracking, getting the jobs is obviously really cool, but even just trying for jobs is, is cool in itself, saying, hey, there's something I didn't realize I could do, and yet I just read an audition and did what I think was a pretty passable job. The people doing the hiring may not agree, but... That's a new and exciting voice I didn't realize I had inside me before. Well, here's a question from one of our fans. Um, what was your favorite line in Sonic Colors? Because I know there was a lot of lines like that were funny and everything, but I just want, we just want to know your favorite. Um, I don't have a favorite line in, in the Sonic world, but I do have a, a favorite moment in the Sonic X cartoons. Um, at one point... Uh, Dr. Eggman broke, broke, hello, broke. Broke is a new <laughs> word I've just written. Broke the fourth wall and spoke to the audience. And he did that a couple of times, actually. And I, I liked those. And I specifically liked at one point where apparently a viewer watching the show uh, called in. And Eggman answered the phone with a hearty, hello. <laughs> that amused me. Ah. So what, did you enjoy voicing um, Ella? The Spanish maid who worked for Chris Thorndike. It was amazingly amusing just to have me cast as Ella. So yes, any time we were recording Ella, it made me just hysterical. Is it hard doing like the Spanish accent type of thing, kind of like what you do? Um, not really. It's it's basically it was just it actually was not as thick of a Spanish accent as it could have been, but for reasons of making it intelligible and not offensive to everyone, I had to tone it down a bit. Mm -hmm. So it's basically your basic Spanish accent that I would do, and then we put a little bit of falsetto on top of it, and there's Ella the Maid. <laughs> that is so awesome. Like, I grew I, up watching Sonic X and all that, and that's just awesome that you would do that. Because that's my job in right there, so that's pretty awesome. Excellent. Here's another um, fan question. How many years have you done voice acting? Um... In animation type stuff since about 2000 or 2001, and then radio before that in 86. The earliest known professional recording um, that I have is from about 1982. That's available on one of my websites. I'm not particularly proud of it, and I'm not particularly good in it, but. Um, that was about that was the earliest professional recording in a professional studio that I did, and yeah, it wasn't that bad. How long did you do radio? Because that seems pretty fun. Uh, it was from eighty with any degree of professional it was professionalism from nineteen eighty six to nineteen ninety three, and then I was in a syndication outfit from nineteen ninety three to two thousand and five. Okay, here's another fan question: When you got the voice. When you were auditioning for the voice of Eggman, or however, how did it go? Like, what happened? It was one of the longest, most harrowing, arduous, nerve-wracking auditions I've ever had. Um, it started innocently enough. I got... Uh, I, w I had been on the talent roster at 4Kids for a while. They had a s secret meeting with the staff. They never had, had staff meetings for the talent, hardly ever. Um, and they happen to have one to announce some of the latest goings on and the acquisition of a product called Project X. They didn't specify what it was, but within a few weeks it became clear that it was in fact Sonic X. Um, and then it turned out a few weeks later they were auditioning and they 
really wanted me to be Dr. Eggman, and the, the goal was to convince Sega of that fact. So they gave me about two dozen voice clips of Dean Bristow from one of the games, and they said, here, match that. So I spent some hours listening to it and going, rah, 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 I'm Dean Bristow, rah, 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 rah. and I came in and did my first audition, and basically it was me doing Dean Bristow. I'm Dr. Eggman, Dean Bristow, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> Um, call, got a call back a couple weeks later. Came in, did the same thing. A third round of callbacks because Sega apparently still was not convinced, and I guess it was third time's the charm. And uh, there I was, both Doctor Eggman. And then a couple weeks into recording, the character of Ella the Maid came up, and I happened to be in the booth one day doing stuff. He said, "Do you have to cast Ella the Maid?" No, let's have Mike do it. So they had me read it. I came up with basically what ended up being the final voice. I said, that's interesting. We'll get back to you. Next week, I came in for more recording. So how's that L of the mate thing? Now we have someone else doing it. All right, then. Get some uh, the Eggman thing that I had gone in to record. Came back the following week. By the way, we're not doing someone else. Now you're L of the mate as well. <laughs> so there I was. It was L of the mate. So it was kind of a mix-up, I'm guessing. Um, it wasn't a mix-up, it's just the way casting goes. They, the client can't always decide what they want. Ah, uh, I got you. But I'm glad it worked out for me, because it just made me laugh. So here's another fan question. Uh, let me just ask this, because this fan question will not make sense without me asking this first. When you audition for, like, you know, the Pokemon roles and everything, did you audition with Nintendo? Um, no, it's all, uh, the... the the games makers contract to studios. Um, in this case, it was Four Kids Productions um, that was handling the licensing and the dubbing and stuff. So I worked with people at Four Kids. Um, occasionally, for the games at Four Kids, Sega would fly in a couple of people out to New York to record us. And then, recording the more recent games with the LA cast, um, most of the cast would be in LA recording separately and then they would have just one session with just me in, in a New York studio over a fancy high-speed digital line but technically I was employed by the studios and not by Nintendo or Sega directly. Alright, that's cool. So here's another fan question. I'm just piling, piling you up with fan questions today. Um, not a problem. So how's it like what's different about um, voice acting with the old cast like Jason Griffith, Amy Pallant you know, them with, like, the new cast, Roger Craig Smith, Kate Higgins. Nothing's really different because we don't really work together. We all record separately. Um, occasionally I will hear the pre-recorded tracks of whoever's already recorded, and I get to respond to them. But from an acting standpoint in general, although it's, it's better to... It's, it's a better experience as an actor to be able to actually act in real time with people. And I guess I would respond differently to one line reading versus another. But lots of times I may be the first one recording. I don't have anyone to react to. So I'm doing the dialogue in my head anyway. Um, and with the old cast and with the new cast, we're recording separately. They are recording some other day, some other time. With the new cast, they're recording in some other state on some other coast. I'm not working with the other actors directly. So it's kind of like working with yourself. And I'm relying on the director and the producer on the other end of the, of the, either on the other side of the class or the other side of the country, to make sure that I'm giving them the performance that they want. So you just recorded one of those studio glass booths. Um. Yeah, I'm I'm usually in a in either a, a booth in a studio, and I've got um, my director across the glass from me or across the digital phone line from me. All right, that's cool. So here's another question. Uh, so when do first of all do they give you like a specific script that you have to read off of like with you know Eggman and all of them? Absolutely, the writers work long and hard to write a script. So I walk in and I see what basically looks like a big spreadsheet. Um, usually the left-hand column is time code. If I'm doing a, a dubbing a cartoon, or it's a line number or a, or a cue. Um, a, a, dialogue queue with some weird file name Eggman underscore 28 underscore 72 underscore X39 something just so that they know where it goes in the game um, 
and uh, then there's the character name, and then there's the dialogue, and maybe a column of notes over uh, what the writer had intended, and then we go to town. So here's the second part of the question. Like, do they have to change it, like, over time sometimes? Because, like, have you ever had a script that didn't work for you or something? It's really not up to me. My job is to please the director and please the producer. Sometimes when we're recording a, a line, when read writer, there'll be a typo in it, and we'll have to double-check it. Um, in most cases with video games, they tend to get it right the first time because they're not likely to see me again anytime soon. Uh, but with the cartoons, uh, we'll usually record something, and then a couple weeks later when the dub is finished, there may be some fixes that we have to come back and, and get. So if I'm in for another another session in the future, they'll say, and we got a fix from a couple weeks ago, let's do that. All right, so we just defeated the um, boss of Act 2, the Robotnik boss now called Eggman. Mike Pollock Congratulations. All right, Congratulations. and we're about to end this playthrough. It was great having you. You have anything else to say? Thank you so much. Um, check me out. I've got a website at itsamike.com. I-T-S-I, uh, hello, I-T-S-A-M-I-K-E.com. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at It's a Mike and Twitter at It's a Mike. And to see the darker side of me, the irreverent celebrity death comedy blog at thelatestdeadlines.blogspot.com. And I'll, when it's, I'll have all those links in the description. Please. Yeah, no problem. Excellent. Well, Mike, I want to thank you. This has been a, such a big honor. I'm a huge fan. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks for asking. It was a pleasure. All right. See you guys later. Bye-bye.